and welcome back to freephotoshop.com and part 5 of our look at the preferences inside Photoshop Elements and more specifically the displaying cursor settings. Alright, so the first option, show transitional effects, relates to playing a slideshow. If you have this active, then all the transitions such as fades and wipes will be seen when you're previewing the show. If it's turned off, you'll still create the transitions when outputting, but when you're previewing them, you won't see them. I'd recommend leaving this option on unless you don't want to see the transitions when previewing or if you're having problems viewing them on your computer. Next up is the painting cursors and this comes into play when using any of Photoshop's brushes. So the burn tool and the dodge tool, the sponge tool, the color replacement tool or just the standard paintbrush to name just a few. So if you choose this first option, standard brush, we'll paint with an actual brush icon as seen in this little preview. The trouble here is that it's hard to see where we're actually painting. Sure we can see the tip easy enough, but there's no indication of the size of the brush or anything like that. So looks kinda dainty, but it's not very practical. The precise cursor is similar except it takes the shape of a cross rather than a brush. Trouble is we still see no indication of the size of the brush so again it's not very practical. Next up is the normal brush tip which comes to us in a circular shape so we can see exactly how big the brush actually is. Once again you can see what's happening in this little preview pane and the next option full size brush tip works exactly the same, the only difference is when you're working with a soft brush. So with a normal brush tip, the size of the circle exactly matches the size of the brush until we reduce the hardness. Once we start doing that, we see a circle that matches a smaller area than what we're actually painting. If we have our full size brush tip active, then the size of the circle always matches the size of the paint stroke even when we have a soft brush. Photoshop is going to use the circle to represent the maximum area that paint can be laid down. Also if you're using either of those last two options, normal brush tip or full size brush tip, we can elect to have a crosshair inside the paintbrush to represent the exact center of the brush, which may come in handy if you're trying to be as precise as possible. Another quick tip while we're here, if you wanted to have this crosshair option turned off, which I tend to do, and you want quick access to the cross when using Photoshop, you can simply press the caps lock key and the cursor will change from the circle to a cross. Press the caps lock again and change it back. The other cursors option on the right allows us to choose between a standard cursor as previewed here, once again inside this little preview pane, or the precise cursor for tools such as the eyedropper and as we mentioned before you can use that caps lock trick to get the precise cursor on the fly should we go with the standard cursor which is what I would recommend that you do. Finally we have an option to use the standard crop shield for cropping images and the color and the opacity of it should we decide that that's the way we want to go. I'm going to cancel out of here for a second and then I'll go ahead and grab the crop tool by either clicking on it over here in the toolbox or I can press the letter C on the keyboard. Now I'll make a rough rectangular crop of this image we have on screen and you'll notice the area outside the crop area has faded away and that's a function of having the shield active. The other two options control the color of the shield and the opacity so how much of the image we can see through. I'd highly recommend you leave this option set to its default because as you can see here when we're cropping away we have a much much better idea of how the image will look once cropped thanks to the area we'll lose being toned down. Alright so I'll escape out of that and I'll hit Control or Command K to open up preferences and then I'll hit Control or Command 4 to get back to where we were previously and here's those options we want to leave well alone for the time being. So shield on, the color black, and the opacity set at 75%. All right, that wraps up another chapter of preferences. Thanks for joining me here at freephotoshop.com, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll take a look at transparency settings. I'll see you there.